Hi, my name is Ash Coonley. I am the uh, president of the IEEE Eta Kappa Nu Lambda Beta chapter here at CSUN. And I am going to quickly go over how to build an inverting operational amplifier circuit. Um, operational amplifiers are really important, so it's um, good to understand how to read the pins and set up these circuits, um, especially while we're virtual and you have this MIDAC. Um, so for the particular op-amp circuit that I'm going to build, I am looking for a gain of 11 um, from the calculations that you did in your class over the summer with me in your lab. Um, in order to do that, we needed a ratio of R2 over R1 to be 10. Um, so I decided to choose a 100K uh, resistor for the R2 and the 10K resistor for my R1. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these in the board so I can uh, measure them in the DMM. I'm gonna go ahead and do this so I can... I don't have the colors memorized, so it's general good practice to just measure the resistors anyway, especially if you end up going back on campus and you're in those labs working with those resistors. Um, the buckets of resistors aren't always sorted uh, accurately, so you should always be checking your resistor values. So I'm just going to click on my DMM through MI Elvis. Right now, and when you open it, it usually starts on your DC voltage. So you're gonna wanna change this over to ohms. It sets the highest value. Uh, I know what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the 20K ohm uh, range and I'm going to select run. So I have my probes here because resistors aren't polar. It doesn't really matter which side I'm working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this top one. And let's see, I think this might be my 100K. Let's check the bottom one. So this looks like it's the 10. So I got my um, tolerance kicking in there. And let's go up to the 200K and measure this one. So 98.9, 98.8. So this is gonna be my R2, my bigger resistor, and this is gonna be my R1. So my R2 over R1 is still about 10, um, even given the tolerance. So now that I'm done with these, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my probes to the side here and unplug these, just pop these out. Um, it's also good to note, in case you don't notice, this port is meant for your voltage and your resistance measurements. You should always have the black um, plug in, and this is for your current. So um, the max that it will measure is one amp, which is quite a bit. So it's really important to make sure that you're doing your hand counts correctly and that you're not drawing a bunch of current. Um, so now that I'm done with my DMM, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And I am going to look at the two photos that I have here for my op amp. So. I'm gonna keep my 10K down here because it's lower. Move my 100K up a little bit. So op amps, um, they're going to have this little circle or sometimes it'll be a half circle on the side. That's to indicate that it's the top, just like it is in the photo. It's a half circle at the top or sometimes it'll be in the top left-hand corner. Your pins are always gonna start in the top left-hand and they're gonna go all the way down and then across and back up. So if you notice in the pin configuration photo that I have, it starts one, then two, three, four, then down here in the bottom right side is five, and then up is six, seven, eight. So it ends at eight in the top right-hand corner. Uh, when you first get your op amps, um, they might be a little bit more open than this. Um, and it's okay to just very gently uh, set up the legs so that they'll snap into your breadboard a little easy. So you want to keep your circle or your dot, your half circle um, near or on the top and then you're going to go ahead and gently put your op amp in here and you want it to bridge this. 
So if you put in uh, one side too hard, like I did a little bit here, um, it won't snap in on the other side. So make sure that you feel it snap in on both the left and the right sides. Um, so now I am going to, let's deal with just the breadboard for now. So I'm going to look at my other operational amplifier, this inverting uh, photo with my R1 and my R2. So I'm going to set up the resistors first. R2 is between V out, which is our pin six in this other photo. It says output and you can see it's coming out from the same spot. And it connects to the inverting input, which is pin two here. So we're gonna go ahead and use this 100K and we're gonna bridge over the op amp. So this is my pin one, I want pin two. So we'll go to two down and I want pin six, which is gonna be this pin, oh, that's seven, this six. So we have pin two here, pin six here. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our R1 resistor and this is gonna go from our non-inverting input, the same um, node that our R2 is in, and it's gonna go to our V in. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna go from pin two, the node at pin two, and go to the V in, which I'm gonna put on my positive power bar here. Um, speaking of that, since I have my my DAC on the other side, I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to connect this vertical power bar or this input bar that I'm using to this other one here. So um, let's see, this looks good. Um, all that's left is that I need to connect the non-inverting input, which is our pin three here, pin three here to ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to pin three. Put this in here. And I am going to bring this down here to the bottom. This is where I'm gonna have my ground. So I have these components set up before I connect the MyDAC. If you wanna do the MyDAC first, um, that's fine. Just make sure you don't run it and have it on while you're plugging and everything. Um, I also like to try to get the elements set up um, or the components set up on my breadboard first so that I'm not dealing with a bunch of wires everywhere and trying to figure out afterwards where my components are going to go. So now that we're going to bring in the my deck, um, I have all of my wires already connected in my bar. Um, they're all screwed in and good to go. Um, I am going to go ahead and connect my 15 plus and my 15 minus. My 15 plus, if you look at the pinout, is going to be oh, on pin seven, so this V plus power. So I'm gonna take my 15 plus, which is my yellow, my first yellow. Go ahead, put this on pin seven. And then I'm gonna take my 15 minus, which is gonna be my first blue, and it is here in the picture on my pin four, so the power V minus. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over to pin four and plug that in. It's important to have this 15 plus and 15 minus in here, um, or even when you're running the simulations, it's important to make sure that you have um, your power for your um, your maximum and your minimum values. If you run it in piecewise or you run this without your 15 plus 15 minus and you have a pretty large gain, you're gonna see clipping. So if you see clipping, the first thing you should do is check and see that you have your 15 plus 15 minus plugged into your um, op amp and the correct pins. So then the next thing I have is my uh, AG ground for my AO. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on the bar. And then I have my AO0, which I'm gonna use as my output. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on this power bar. So this is already connected down here. 
to this side and this side is what's connected to my R1 resistor. So that's good to go. I am not going to use my A01. I only need the one input. I still have this in here just because I typically use a lot of stuff. So I'm actually just gonna plug this away from the rest of the circuit um, just so I don't have it flying around everywhere. So then next I have my AI, so my input, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect my ground to the ground bar here. So I got both my grounds here, my ground for my op amp also on this ground bar. And then I'm gonna take my zero, my AI zero plus, which is my second yellow here. And I'm gonna plug this into the power um, or the voltage input bar, the plus bar that I keep calling the power bar here. So I'm gonna plug this in here. And that's to make sure that when I have my measurement um, or my output, that it that I'm getting the right output or what I'm expecting. Um, it also helps when you're comparing, especially with something like this, where you have an inverting op amp, you can see that it's out of phase if you have it up against the input. So um, then I'm gonna take this, which is my zero minus, and I'm gonna put this on ground. So your zero minus doesn't necessarily need to be ground for all of your circuits. You can think of it similarly to the P-Spice voltage probe that has the two probes. So the, v, the minus is gonna give you your reference. Here, for this op-amp circuit, everything is gonna be to ground, so I'm just gonna plug this into the ground bar. Then I have my AI1+. plus. So this is gonna be the output that I'm measuring from my op-amp after it's done this this um, additional gain of 11 and the inversion. So this, based on the photo that I have here, is going to be for pin six. And this is also where we have the other side of R2. So I'm gonna put this right next to my pin for R2. So pin six. And then same thing for the one plus, this is the reference for, or sorry, for the one minus is the reference for the one plus. And this again is just gonna go onto the ground bar here. So everything is plugged in here. Everything is plugged in on my board. I have all of my circuit components. I got my op amp, I have my two resistors. So everything should be good to go. So I am going to go ahead and open my programs in the NI Elvis. So I'm gonna minimize these photos. So let's open the function generator and the oscilloscope. Here's my oscilloscope, where my function generator go? Okay, so I am going to go ahead and uh, run this. Right now it's got nothing here. The information that was used for our particular lab for this circuit was a one kilohertz signal, and we wanted to do 100 uh, microvolts, so we're gonna do 0.1 volts. We're gonna leave it as a sine wave. This is our um, A00. So if you have this on A01 or you use A01 and this is on A00, make sure that um, you're paying attention to what's going on because if you turn this on and you don't get a signal, that could be one of those reasons. Um, a lot of students forget to check the channels or even to select the run button. So my function generator is good to go. Um, this looks good, um, but I can't really read this. So I'm gonna go ahead and also enable my other um, input channel that I have here. This is the one from the op amp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the time per division. So this is the time base option. You can use the knobs if you would like. I would like to see just a one period or two is fine. Um, this one looks good. So we're gonna keep it at 500 microseconds. For the uh, trigger, there's the immediate type, which gives us this moving waveform, and you can change it to edge, and it will keep this in place. For um, modifying this so that you have more readable numbers or more legible numbers, you can go ahead and change the scale in your volts per division. So I'm going to change the channel one setting first because this is larger, and I would like to keep these the same scale if that's possible. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to 500. Looks like I could go a little more, so let's do 200. Let's see what 100 looks like. Okay, so 100 millivolts is, um, there's a little bit of clipping and I don't feel like adjusting the position, which you could do here. So I'm going to bring it back to 200 millivolts. So I'm gonna bring this to 200 millivolts. And so now you can more easily see my green, which was the input of my function generator, I guess the output of my function generator and the input into this channel. And the blue is the output of the op amp, um, which is clearly um, amplifying the signal and um, it's also inverting it. So it's out of phase by 180 degrees here. Um, you can go ahead and hit stop if you would like and it would freeze this. You can also keep this running, but you can turn your cursor on while it's running. Um, that's completely up to you. Um, if you would like to change the colors, there's another video for that. Um, and then you can also move these while this is running. If you stop it, the cursors will remain where they are. Um, and you can kind of read the values that you're getting here and try to pick like a better position for where you want your cursor to end up. Um, and so that's how I have my simple inverting operational amplifier. So this is with the LM741, which is also found in PSpice. Um, and I can do a video for how to run um, the simulations in PSpice for time and frequency. And that's all I have. Thanks.